the pages of history are replete with stories of leaders and their trusted generals, and World War II was no exception. Adolf Hitler, the enigmatic leader of Nazi Germany, promoted a total of 24 men to the prestigious rank of field marshal during the course of the war. These individuals played diverse roles in the conflict, ranging from fanatical Nazis to brilliant military tacticians. In this comprehensive video, we will delve into the chronological order of their promotions, examining their significance and contributions within the context of World War II's unfolding drama. The Pinnacle of Success In the summer of 1940, Hitler found himself on the precipice of triumph. Just four weeks after France's capitulation, he basked in a string of rapid conquests. With Great Britain's military situation described by Hitler as hopeless, he seized the opportunity to reward and motivate his top generals. He elevated 12 of them to the esteemed rank of Field Marshal, General Feld Marshal in German, to secure their loyalty and inspire them for the battles that lay ahead. Nine of these new Field Marshals hailed from the German army. Fedor von Bock As an army group commander, von Bock achieved remarkable victories in Poland, 1939, the West, 1940 the invasion of Russia, 1941, and South Russia, 1942. However, when he opposed Hitler's decision to divide forces in the Southern Campaign, Hitler relieved him of his duties. Von Bock remained inactive until his death, which occurred four days before the war's end in an airstrike. Walther von Brauchitsch Initially, the head of the German Army General Staff, Brauchitsch realized the futility of challenging Hitler's decisions. After suffering a heart attack and requesting relief from duty, Hitler replaced him but retained the role of head of the army general staff himself, despite his lack of professional training and experience. Wilhelm Keitel As the head of the German Supreme Command throughout the war, Keitel seldom challenged Hitler and became little more than a high-ranking yes-man at his side. Gunther von Kluger Kluger achieved success as an army commander in the campaigns in Poland, France, and Russia. However, a severe car accident in October 1943 led to a year-long recovery period. Later, he assumed the role of supreme commander in the Western Front after the Allied landing in Normandy. However, his involvement in the attempts to assassinate Hitler led to his death, reportedly by gunshot after refusing to commit suicide. Wilhelm Ritter von Lieb Initially an army group commander in the Western Front, von Lieb later led Army Group North in the invasion of Russia, targeting Leningrad. Despite a lengthy and brutal German siege, Leningrad remained resilient, leading Hitler to accuse von Lieb of cowardice and senility, eventually accepting his resignation. Wilhelm List List commanded an army during the invasion of Poland and France, as well as the conquest of Yugoslavia and Greece. In the summer of 1942, he led an army group in a significant advance into Russian territory, aiming for the oil fields of the Caucasus and the Caspian Sea. However, with limited resources and supplies, progress stalled, leading to List's removal from command. Walter von Riekinar A staunch Nazi, von Riekinar led armies in the invasions of Poland, France, and Russia. In January 1942, he suffered a stroke and passed away. Gord von Rundstedt Dismissed from service before the war due to his age and seniority, von Rundstedt was recalled at the war's outset. He commanded an army group in the invasions of Poland, France, and Russia with remarkable success. However, when he requested permission for a tactical retreat to secure his line, Hitler replaced him, eventually recalling him to service as the supreme German commander in the Western Front. Von Rundstedt's call for negotiations with the Western Allies was met with dismissal by Hitler, who replaced him again. In the war's final months, he suggested peace negotiations once more but was sacked for the last time. Erwin von Witzelben An anti-Nazi involved in secret plots against Hitler before the war, von Witzelben commanded an army during the invasion of France. He was slated to become the supreme commander of the armed forces in the failed July 20th. 1944 plot and was subsequently executed. Three other field marshals emerged from the Luftwaffe Air Force. Albert Kesselring. Kesselring held command over both ground and air forces, 
a rare feat he initially served as an artillery officer before transitioning to the German Air Force in 1933. His multifaceted role included piloting fighter aircraft. During the war, he commanded an air fleet in the invasions of Poland and Russia, eventually overseeing all German forces in Italy during the Allied invasion of Sicily. His skillful leadership delayed the Allied advance for nearly two years. Erhard Milch in 1940, Milt successfully commanded an air fleet during the airborne and naval invasion of Norway and the invasion of France. However, he assumed an administrative role in late 1941, overseeing the German military aviation industry. Hugo Spurl Spurl commanded the pre-war Legion Condor, the German air expeditionary force in the Spanish Civil War. His leadership in an air fleet in the invasion of France and subsequent involvement in the Battle of Britain highlighted his career. However, his objections to the shift in strategy, from attacking the Royal Air Force to bombing British cities, went unheeded, contributing to the German defeat in the Battle of Britain. Later, he commanded a smaller air force in France as the German focus shifted to the Eastern Front. The Tipping Point By mid-1942, Germany had faced setbacks in its attempts to defeat Great Britain in 1940 and the Soviet Union in 1941. Hitler launched a secondary effort against these adversaries with reduced forces in secondary areas of the war front, hopeful of success. Optimism reigned as he promoted some of his most brilliant generals to field marshal positions, although the war's tide had already turned against Germany. Erwin Rommel Renowned for his tactical prowess, Rommel commanded an armoured division in the 1940 invasion of France. In 1941, he assumed command of a small corps in North Africa to assist the beleaguered Italian army. Despite exceeding expectations, Rommel couldn't secure victory due to being outnumbered and cut off from maritime support. Shortly before the German surrender in North Africa, he was relieved due to medical reasons but later promoted to command an army group along the French Atlantic coast. After surviving an Allied airstrike, he was implicated in the failed assassination attempt on Hitler and offered the choice to commit suicide, which he chose, preserving his family from punishment. Erich von Manstein A skilled strategist and tactician in both blitzkrieg attacks and mobile defense, von Manstein earned admiration from German soldiers at all ranks. His career included infantry division command in 1939 and a key role in planning the invasions of Poland and France. During the Russian invasion, he led an armor corps and an army before being given command of an army group on November 19, 1942. Forced into a continuous campaign of retreat battles due to overwhelming Russian forces, von Manstein's retreats eventually led to his dismissal by Hitler in March 1944. George von Kukla Kukla served as an army commander in the invasions of Poland, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Russia. When Army Group North failed to capture Leningrad, Hitler appointed Kukla, an ardent Nazi, as the new commander. However, Leningrad's resistance continued, and when Kukla requested permission to retreat to prevent encirclement, Hitler removed him from his position. Fighting a lost war When German forces surrendered at Stalingrad, marking one of the war's most catastrophic defeats, it became evident that Germany was fighting a losing battle. Hitler promoted new field marshals not to inspire future victories but as a gesture of recognition for heroic yet futile efforts, acknowledging his own culpability in the war's outcome. Friedrich Paulus A staff officer with no prior field command experience, Paulus assumed command of an army in late 1941. During the 1942 summer offensive, his forces reached Stalingrad on the western bank of the Volga River. Paulus' attempts to conquer the city failed, and the German armies were trapped within the city's confines. As the situation grew dire, Hitler promoted Paulus to field marshal but expected him to commit suicide rather than surrender. However, Paulus chose to surrender, feeling betrayed by Hitler for the Stalingrad catastrophe. Maximilian von Weichs a corps commander in the invasions of Poland and France, von Weichs commanded the army group stationed around Stalingrad. He warned Hitler about the vulnerabilities in his army group's extended and thinly defended flanks west and south of Stalingrad. Instead of heeding the warning, Hitler disbanded von Weich's army group and sent him to reserve. 
Following the realization of von Weich's warning in the Stalingrad disaster, Hitler promoted him to field marshal. He later assumed command of an army group in the Balkans, where he remained until the war's end. Wolfram Freiherr von Richefen Commanding an air corps of tactical dive bombers in the invasions of Poland, France, Belgium, and Greece, von Richefen led an air fleet during the invasion of Russia. When German forces at Stalingrad were encircled, Goering, the Minister of the Air Force, erroneously promised Hitler that the Luftwaffe could resupply the besieged troops by air. Von Richefen and his air crews valiantly attempted the impossible task, resulting in the loss of 500 aircraft and crews. Following the surrender of the Stalingrad forces, Hitler promoted von Richefen to field marshal as a reward for his heroic yet futile efforts. Karl Dienitz an innovative naval tactician, Dienitz rebuilt and commanded the German Navy's submarine force during the war. Obstacles to unleashing the full potential of submarines included the surface warfare-focused Grand Admiral Raider and Hitler himself, both of whom diverted resources to surface warships. After the Stalingrad catastrophe, Hitler finally embraced Dienitz's approach, promoting him to Grand Admiral and appointing him as the head of the Navy. Submarine production and operations became the Navy's primary focus, although it was too late for the submarines to change the war's outcome in the Atlantic. Ernst Busch An army commander in the invasions of France and Russia, Busch assumed command of the Central Army Group in October 1943, replacing the injured von Kluger. Eight months later, his army group fell victim to a major Russian offensive, leading to his dismissal. In March 1945, Bush was recalled to service and led an army group comprising the remnants of the defeated German forces in the West. Paul Ludwig Ewald von Kleist Von Kleist commanded an armor corps in the invasion of Poland and an armor group, army, in the invasions of France, Yugoslavia, Greece, and Russia. In 1942 and 1943, he commanded an army group in the southern Russian theater. However, in March 1944, Hitler removed him from command for allowing one of his armies to retreat against explicit orders. Walter Model Model commanded an armor division during the invasion of Russia, later leading an armor corps and an army with remarkable success and innovative tactics. In 1944, he succeeded von Kukler as commander of Army Group North and was promoted to Field Marshal, becoming the second youngest after Rommel. Model went on to command several army groups in Russia and France, adept serving as Hitler's firemen, by using a strategy of counterattacks that proved successful on the battlefield and palatable to Hitler. In April 1945, as Germany's collapse loomed, even Model's skills could no longer delay the inevitable, and he chose suicide to avoid surrender. Just before the end. In the waning days of the war, as Germany's forces dwindled, Hitler made a final, Symbolic gesture by promoting the last two German field marshals of World War II. Ferdinand Schooner Initially a regiment commander in the invasion of Poland, Schooner received multiple promotions during the war, eventually becoming an army group commander in March 1944. He implemented harsh measures, including executions, to combat desertions and retreats, which had increased due to the collapsing German front lines. His troops feared him more than the enemy, but he earned favor from Hitler and Goebbels, leading to his promotion to Field Marshal in April 1945. Schooner remains unique as the only Field Marshal imprisoned for war crimes by both the Allied and German sides, initially as a prisoner of war in Russia and later in post-war West Germany for illegal executions of German soldiers. Robert Ritter von Graham a fighter pilot and ace in World War I, von Graham commanded an air corps and later an air fleet in World War II. For days before Hitler's suicide, von Graham was summoned to the Führerbunker, where Hitler promoted him to field marshal and appointed him supreme commander of the air force, replacing Goering. By this time, only scattered remnants of the air force remained. In the final moments of World War II, these promotions served as symbolic gestures, signifying the end of an era. As Germany's defeat became imminent, Hitler's once mighty field marshals found themselves facing the harsh reality of a war they could not win. Their ranks may have swelled over the course of the conflict, but ultimately, they could not alter the course of history. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel.
By subscribing, you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. You can also help to support of my channels at PayPal details in the description box below.